In low and middle income countries, the one thing that we have to deal with is the big population that we have. And also um, the sort of interactions and the densities in the population is definitely a big impact factor to the use of healthcare, to the efficiencies of the healthcare system. Um, so therefore, I think in Vietnam, for example, with such a big population, we definitely have lack resource in the human resource and, and, and capacities, um, you know, expertise, and also uh, medical devices and instruments to serve such a, a a big population. So therefore, AI and machine learning and advanced technology will, will have a, a much more profounding impact in filling that gap and getting people uh, more access into healthcare, quality healthcare. I am Dr. Din Ngoc Minh. I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Science, Engineering and Technology here at MIT Vietnam. I have a PhD in computer science from Monash University in Australia. I have a couple of years working as a lecturer in computer science and as a postdoc, a research fellow in Monash University and as well in the University of Queensland in Brisbane, Australia. My focus of research and my passion in research is very much in computer science, especially in optimization, in computational science, and lately uh, in the field of cloud computing, AI, machine learning. So looking at how we can use AI machine learning to improve the uh, efficiencies and so also the productivities and, and accuracies of computing uh, technologies and algorithms. And the focus in that is very much in a uh, field technology for healthcare. So we're looking at using AI machine learning to help improving uh, healthcare uh, processes, especially around uh, working with um, doctor handwritings and also to um, model and understanding um, the computational modeling of uh, things like outbreak. And especially here in Vietnam, you know, with the lack of resources, the lacks of expertise, the lacks of uh, instruments and, and, and devices, I think advanced technologies like AI and machine learning would be, would be a, a way forward to bridge the gap there and help everyone else in Vietnam and low and middle income countries uh, have a chance to access better, higher quality care and, and low cost care. I actually have a chance to visit the Hospital of Tropical Diseases here in Ho Chi Minh City in 2019. And I had a chance to see doctors and nurses in the ICU unit there, uh, working with patients, especially patients who need very special care. And uh, the amount of work they have to do every day is amazing. And uh, they, there's so much pressure for them to really have time for, for their patient. But they still have to allocate some time during the day to work uh, with others and also to do administrative tasks. And those are quite uh, tedious and repetitive. And I can see that you know uh, machine learning and AI and also advanced technology can help uh, reduce the workload for uh, health workers like nurses and doctors in hospital. Um, so we're looking at uh, working with uh, doctor handwritings and, and documents and notes, for example. This is the, the area where we can really uh, do something quick and efficient. Just now we finished another prototype for the hospital. This prototype really was trained and developed on real doctor notes from the Hospital of Tropical Diseases. Doctor handwriting is definitely um, something of a uh, of a challenge, you know, not just in Vietnam, but everywhere else, right? So when we talk about doctor handwriting, people would like, wow, that's, um, that's not something that you can actually easily understand. But, but this is not really much about, you know, the challenge of seeing or, or understanding or recognizing doctor handwriting. It's more about working with uh, doctors and help them to reduce the everyday work and the sort of work they have to do every day. And at the same time too, there's a well of knowledge and information and data in these handwriting notes. By being able to digitize this, we actually bring this well of knowledge to life. The machine can actually learn from that. So really help um, other doctors, for example, create training materials and also for a more senior doctor to actually learn from that and identify certain patterns and issues that they wouldn't be able to do before. And the final thing I would say is that you know, even though with all the advancement in technology, doctors still have to write their own notes here and there. Um, not just in Vietnam, but other countries as well. So they have very limited time in the morning going around and checking patients and to get them going, they have to write out something. Um, so this technology, this tool will still be helpful in the years to come. In the latest work in this project, we get to work with doctors to build what we call an active learning pipeline. So 
often we will guess words incorrectly. So definitely there's no 100% accuracy rate here. So definitely there's some word that we will miss yes, and that would have a, 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 an impact on the overall result. Uh, what we do in, at this stage is allow doctor to actually review that. Um, so if they found certain words have been incorrectly labeled, um, they have a chance to actually relabel it. After they relabel it, we want to use that to retrain the machine uh, so that it can make a better guess next time. So this is what we call active learning. The machine keeps actively learn from the doctor, learn from the mistake that it made, uh, that been that been highlighted by the doctor, and then and improve the accuracy. I think the biggest challenge uh, when it comes to do research in healthcare um, is very much around collecting data. So data is very much the bulk of the work when it comes to AI and machine learning. You know, without data, you cannot do much. And collecting data is very hard here, um, especially in healthcare because of issue with privacy, issue with uh, confidentiality. Those are very sensitive data, you know, like personal data, patient uh, information uh, are personal data, and uh, it's not that easy to collect them. Uh, also, as well, um, in healthcare, we always have a very clear and, 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 and rigorous um, ethical uh, clearing process. And this sort of process would take a lot of time uh, for us, but also for doctors as well, uh, to get approved, uh, to see uh, if they can have a, a project going. And so therefore, it's, it's definitely a, a big barrier when it comes to do research in healthcare. In terms of technologies as well, we need to, still we need to some instrument uh, so that we can build a crowd through. So say if AI machine or AI system can make a prediction, we want to make sure that such a prediction um, can be compared and contrast against something uh, that comes from you know, our conventional process like a machine or a, a clinical process. So uh, definitely we, we need to have the sort of instruments and investment in instruments and medical devices so that we can build what we call crowd through and then use that to compare against what we can make prediction with using AI. And, and, and therefore, you know, evaluate um, the work that we've done and, uh, and see if AI can be useful in that area. I believe that investment into advanced technologies uh, for healthcare, especially in low and middle income countries like Vietnam, is very important, it's crucial. We must do that. So a machine does not multiply itself, but software can be deployed across the country fairly quickly. So therefore, we need to look into this and invest into advanced technology so that you know, the sort of, of, of care, the sort of access to care become more scalable, more popular, more available uh, to everyone in a very dense, in a big population like in low and middle income countries like Vietnam. I started uh, looking at this sort of um, research in, in healthcare because I, I have a, an, an interest in what we call natural language processing, so NLP. So in that um, ICU unit, um, doctors have to spend a lot of time with patients, which is, which is great. But at the same time, you know, at the end of the day, they have to spend one, two, three hours per day to do data entry. So being able to help them to automate that process, being able to help them to convert or transcribe their handwriting into machine text, for example, uh, would be very helpful for them.